What's up you beautiful people? Welcome back to another video. It's a new year and a new year means a new car. I've gone and done myself a mischief and bought myself a VS Commodore. Woo! What a beauty she is. So I went on Facebook Marketplace and I found myself the cheapest, dirtiest, nastiest manual ute I could find. And this is what we've ended up with. She's a mighty V6 Ecotech. Only way to go, mate. None of that five litre rubbish. Nah, we're all about the mangs. Ooh, mang, mang, no shit. This car does have its uh, does have its issues. Obviously, it was very cheap. However, there are certain parts of the car that are in quite good nick, so... I think we've got ourselves a pretty good base to uh, start working on and the plans for this car are essentially to be a tow car but we know it's not just going to stay a tow car do we? <laughs> so we got big things, I've already ordered a bunch of stuff for this. There is two main things wrong with this car, first being the fact that the clutch does not work or it barely disengages. It looks like it's broken something on the thrust bearing side or the clutch fingers. Uh, it looks like it's a pull clutch from what I can figure out. And basically, as soon as you put the clutch, even if I set everything up right, it just pops straight off the fingers. So, I have ordered myself a extreme heavy-duty clutch. Uh, we're going to be towing with it, and obviously, you know, we need to be able to handle a bit of abuse, so no standard clutch is going to do the job. And the other thing was, there is some damage on the left-hand rear quarter, which daniel son has been uh, working, slaving away at. Now... I can't remember if I took a photo of this before, but it was pretty bloody rough. To say the least, uh, Daniel's had his work cut out for him because someone has made the bodgiest, most terrible attempt at repairing this. So, how was that, mate? That was junk. Yeah. Absolute junk. Absolute junk. Couldn't expect less from a Commodore, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen such ridiculous repair attempts. Seriously, it would have been better if someone had just bogged the whole thing. So, they drilled holes, like, all the way along that to try and pull it, but it separated all the skin down here. And, you know, to get in there, what do they do? They just cut big slits in here just to open that up. Obviously, there is a panel that goes in this bit, but that whole bit normally sits flat. Definitely not ideal, uh, but it is looking all right at the moment. Obviously, we're not going to metal finish this to perfection. It is a VS Ute that's going to get abused, so... Done up, welded up all the holes. Well, sorry. Daniel welded up all the holes, pulled everything out, uh, and obviously, we will weld this back together once we're done, but you can see in there... Well, you can hopefully, hopefully see in there all the uh, holes that have had to be filled in two different bits. So we're up to the stage of putting some bog over the thing now, get everything shaped. I've been on eBay and bought myself two tail lights for 40 bucks, including postage. God, I love Commodore Life. There's definitely something about it. Because this one was absolutely sh shagged. And we had to get this uh, rear, I forget what they're called now. Bumperette, I think Commodore people are calling them. So this is a bumperette for a VSU. And it happens to be in red. And I got that for $100 with a pair of them. So once again, living the Commodore life on Facebook Marketplace. Hopefully it'll match up pretty good. It seems like it's the same color code, although this has definitely been painted again. There is the usual dint on the tailgate, Commodore life. We'll worry about that another time. At least the main bodywork will be sorted. The paintwork doesn't actually look that bad for most of the vehicle. Obviously it's bright red, so it's fast as heck already, even though it's standing still. We're gonna definitely gonna clean it up a little bit more and make it look a little nicer. So, engine-wise, obviously 3.8 Ecotech. Some parts of this car have been done really dodgy, but then other things like anything in this engine bay actually looks quite nicely done. There's a few hoses replaced, teeter taps, a bunch of new clamps. I think there's a new pulley on one of those, and a few little things here and there. So, part of it had been taken care of, at least at some point. I'm gonna say the previous owner uh, definitely did not take care of it very well, but that's all right. We're going to fix that. She's on steelies at the moment. One 16 inch one for some reason, another 315, and they're all bald as shit. There's no door card on here at the moment. That is because every time I went to touch the door or touch the dwindle handle, this just fell out of it. Usual Commodore things. I did have a VS Ute way back in the day. Had a hell of a lot of fun. The police did not like it very much, and I did have to get rid of that vehicle, but we're back. Anyway, we've got the window jammed up in the regulator now, so it is holding up so we couldn't get water in it. However, I've got new window under mechanism, and I've got all the door rubbers because parts of them are missing, damaged, and just crap. Get that all sorted and get the door car back on there, and that should be mint. 
it's not too shabby interior wise a couple of little things it'll need obviously it needs a bit of a clean up but it's not that bad we are manuel my favorite thing about this car and one of the main reasons i jumped straight on it was it is manual and bench seat now that is a pretty rare combo in these cars. Uh, if you had the manuals, you pretty much always had bucket seats. If you had the bench seat, you usually always had the column shift auto. So yeah, they did exist, but quite rare. So pumped on that one. Even when I had my old ute, I actually looked at a lot to try and find the right trims and the uh, seat to get mine converted, but never got around to it. So here we are. She's got the fully sick HSV roof lining. Definitely not something I would have done, but it's actually done really nicely, so I'm definitely not changing that. Got another head unit to go in with some Bluetooth, uh, a few small things. It's already got some decent speakers. Had them on the other day and it was pumping some limp biscuit that's in that uh, CD player right now, so rocking out. Otherwise, interior really doesn't need a lot, so I got a new AC button because this doesn't work. Um, yeah, replace that. A few little things and a clean up. She's done 285,000 Ks, so she's fresh. But yeah, pretty pumped on the interior condition because for the price we paid for it, I haven't said yet, but we paid $1,300 for this bad boy. So the price we paid for it and given how much these youths are actually going for these days, we did pretty damn well. Yeah. <laughs> Getting all the kisses. I haven't had this on a hoist yet. We obviously don't know. There might be a few more gremlins, but fingers crossed there isn't. Um, I do know for one thing that if you can see that, the panard rod, I have no idea what they've done or if they've jacked up on it or something, but it is bent like a boonana. So luckily I had a mate of mine that just put an adjustable one in his, so I have his old straight one, so that's ready to go in. Anyway, we will be diving into all kinds of things. It'll be a multiple part series as we go from one, getting the car working and running again, fixing the quarter damage. We gotta get this thing roadworthy and registered ASAP because I don't have a tow car. I've been borrowing my mate Danny, shout out your legend, uh, his Falcon Ute for three years as a tow car while he was building his S13. Now he finally finished his car, I don't have an option. So here we are. The other benefit we have here, if you're not aware, we're in Victoria. If your car is over 25 years and older, you can club register it. So it's a lot cheaper registration. You're restricted to either 45 or 90 days, but that's more than what we'll need the car for. This car is a 95, which means it is more than eligible now. We're all about saving money and that's definitely what's gonna happen. You can't save money, you're fucking full of shit. <laughs> the plan, Excluding all the random crap I buy that's not essential, <laughs> which I will, the plan is to have bought this car, fix the mechanical requirements, roadworthy it, and register it for under two and a half thousand dollars. I know it's possible, and that's what we're going to be aiming for. Obviously, there's a bunch of other things I have planned for this car, but the price budget goal is purely to get the car roadworthy and fixed up. So we'll see if we can stick to it. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this journey. There'll be heaps of videos and a lot of progress to go. I am super keen to see the transformation on this car and get this thing on the road. At first, we thought this was like a paddock bashing car, but I think it is just a country car and then someone hasn't maintained it very well, but it has got the usual roo whistle and you can see it's even got like this mesh. I don't know if you can see that, but mesh behind the grill, which a lot of farm cars and stuff have to stop them clogging up the grass when they're driving away on, so. I have a feeling it might have been used on a farmland or something along those lines, uh, at least in one stage or not. It was definitely a farm ute. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's probably the best. As a farm ute, this thing is ridiculously tidy. It should be a lot worse. You usually find these things so much worse than what this is. Yeah, I mean, my old one, I bought for $800, and it looked like it was worth $800. <laughs> This one is not going to take much, and I think this is going to look like quite a nice car. I'm also keen that things are cheap for this car. That's the best part about it. <laughs> you can buy a car, fix it, and do all that crap, and you still haven't paid for like a quarter panel on an S13. <laughs> Got these agricultural mud flaps on there. You know, they're going. Quick wax and grease remove, and we are ready for bog. While Daniel's busy doing that, I figure I'd make myself a little bit useful and do a couple small things that I've noticed need doing. So, first things first, the V6 badges is obviously worn off or fallen off at some point, but we've still got all this old residue, so grab the old camera wheel or pinstripe remover and uh, go to town. Hopefully not burn some paint. Okay. Daniel will take over now. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make it really light. 
Oh, hello. hello. Come to help daddy. No stepping on the line. There's no stepping on the line. It's like melting. Hmm? It's probably been on there 7,000 years. Watch out, baby. I'm gonna start damaging the boat. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was bouncing around. Good from far, far from good. <laughs> Don't look so close. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to be this close to a quarter panel? Obviously, you can still see the outline a little bit. Oh well, I saved so much time by pulling Daniel off that anyway. <laughs> Five metre rule. Perfect. <laughs> So I just had a crack at this side after uh, watching Daniel do the other one. This side's nowhere near sun damage, so token it off and you can't even tell. Mm, making a cake, mate. Pancake mix. So Daniel's finished putting the first layer of bog on the car, and that means it's pub o'clock, baby. Now, that's probably where we're going to wrap this video up, but I'll tell you what, before we do that, let's hear this baby purr. So the wiring in this car is a mess, and it's quite confusing, and the first time I put the battery on, I actually put it on the wrong way around, and that was fun. <laughs> Cause he's connected like terminals to terminals and it's all black and yeah. Oop. So obviously we're gonna address that too, but I don't know why he's extended them. It looks like it's still correct for a factory battery. He must have must have just been dodging up some other battery in there. Oh, and how good is this? The AC works. We've already tested it. The only issue is this button I've got to keep pushed in for the AC to work, but it does get cold and then you let go, it just pops off, so. A new switch for that, and we've got AC. That was a big thing knowing I'm getting this car. My last one didn't have working AC and my window fucked up, and it was a nightmare in summer, so I knew this car was gonna get, it's gonna get tint, and it's gonna get working AC. So, one of those things, already done. Obviously we got bluggy, blugger or clutch, so make sure she's in neutral, which she probably isn't. Yeah. Hello, Marcus. Hello, Luna. <laughs> you wanna turn the key? That's it. Yep. Keep going. Do you want to start it? Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Woo woo! High five! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can definitely hear it, but we have a whole muffler that's exploded at the back, so she's quite loud. <laughs> I'm ready. I say it. Hey? I'm ready. You're ready? Where are we going? No, the car. Room, room? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know this thing's getting seared. <laughs> I was toying with myself if I say it, eh? Ready to go. Ready to go. Yay! Yeah. Anyway, let's wrap it up there. She's a beast. We know it, you know it. It's gonna be gangster, it's gonna be fun. Join the journey, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video. You.